Hello and welcome to Dr. JB's sleep series, clip 4. In this episode, let's talk about dreams. Like I always say, the biological world we belong to is super. Just absolutely super. I was most tickled to learn that the scientific study of dreams is called oneirology. Wow. I'm sure that dreams must have been discussed several, several times over several, several centuries. So Aristotle had observed several animal species while asleep and noticed that movements of several of their body parts were quite similar to those performed by humans during dreaming. And he must have uh, you know, come up with this line because there, was, there must have been a debate about whether animals dream. And he said, all creatures that have four limbs and are sanguine display signs that they dream while asleep. It seems that not only humans but also dogs, cows, sheep and goats and the entire family of four-legged viviparous animals do dream. And so dreams have intrigued us for centuries to a point that we use dreams as a, a, you know, a part of a conversation and something, something like uh, if you want to be intimate with someone say something like I had this nice dream about you last night. Two phrases like I had a dream last night and it's a platform to say whatever nonsensical or a lie or a fantasy that someone might you know, have on his or her mind because there is no way to determine if this claim is true or not. What's interesting is that dream content is not greatly influenced by stimuli that are delivered to the sleeper. So even on relatively infrequent occasions, when external stimuli are incorporated into dreams, they usually appear only incidentally in the dream narrative. What's also interesting is that internal systemic stimulation does not have a consistent effect on dream content. For example, after 24 hours of fluid restriction, dream reports did not have persistent dreams of thirst and only about one-third of them contained references to drinking. Even viewing violent films do not reliably produce violent dreams. So dreaming per se does not require stimulus input either before or during sleep since we normally have several dreams a night under a variety of stimulus conditions. What is extremely interesting is, or rather actually unfortunate, is that dreaming may be absent in a variety of neurologically damaged patients who nevertheless show NREM and REM sleep. We know from neurologically damaged patients that there are many areas of the brain that are not needed for dreaming. And there are some areas, of course, which cause loss of dreaming and some areas which can change the imagery or in dreaming. So this is very interesting because many areas of the brain are required and some, some are not required for dreaming. So now we come to the million dollar question. What is a dream? How is the word dream defined? The word dream has four interrelated meanings that follow one another. When we put them together, all together rather, we know what a dream is. 1. A dream is a form of thinking that occurs when there is a certain yet undetermined minimum level of brain activation. External stimuli are blocked from entry into the mind. The system we call the self-system the I and the me is shut down. 2. A dream is something we experience because the thinking is very real and makes use of our senses, especially seeing and hearing. Because usually 
we are the main actor and because a dream is sometimes emotional. 3. A dream is what we remember in the morning. So it is a memory of the dreaming experience. Fourth and the last is that a dream can only mean the spoken or written report we give to others about that experience. And that is the only way anyone else can ever know about another person's dream. So why do we dream? Do dreams have a function or purpose? Dreams have psychological meaning and cultural uses, but until now no known adaptive function. But dreams are so compelling and often seem so weird and strange. Surely they must have a purpose. That is an adaptive, adaptive role in the maintenance of a bodily or psychological health. The best current evidence suggests otherwise. So dreams probably have no purpose is one way of looking at it. Yet dreams are little dramas our minds make up when the self system is not keeping us alert to the world around us. So I find this in question more interesting. What is the function of dreams? Some of the more prominent dream theories contend that the function of dreaming is to 1. Consolidate memories 2. Process emotions 3. Express our deepest desires 4. Gain practice confronting potential dangers So dreaming is like overnight therapy. It's said that Time heals all wounds, but research suggests that time spent in dream sleep is what heals. REM sleep dreaming appears to take the painful sting out of difficult, even traumatic emotional episodes experienced during the day, offering emotional resolution when you wake up the next morning. So REM sleep is the only time when our brain is completely devoid of the anxiety triggering molecule called noradrenaline. This means that emotional memory reactivation is occurring in a brain free of stress chemical which allows us to reprocess upsetting memories in a safer, calmer environment. So during the dreaming state, your brain will cogitate or put together or think deeply about vast swaths of acquired knowledge and then extract overarching rules and commonalities, creating a mindset that can help us divine solutions to the previously impenetrable problems. So I guess I have to sleep on it makes sense. And I use this phrase quite often when I have a, a compelling, uh, say, a, a challenge during the day or, or I have to think about something uh, or give it some more thought and, and come up with a solution. And I'll say, I have to sleep on it. And in many circumstances, I actually come up with a solution the next morning. And I think that's where dreams kick in and dreams help us uh, resolve many challenges. Can you profile a person using dreams? Dreams are very revealing of what is in our minds. We know that 75 to 100 dreams from a person can give us a pretty good psychological portrait of that individual. So if a thousand dream profiles are collected over a couple of decades probably, Perhaps we can put together a profile of a person's mind that is almost as individualized and accurate as her or his fingerprints. How often do we dream? Most people over the age of 10 dream at least 4 to 6 times per week. And when do we dream? To get to that point, let's go to the next slide. In the 1950s, scientists studied dreaming and the two phases of sleep, REM and NREM or non-REM. 
They woke up subjects during REM and NREM sleep and asked them to describe any dreams they were having. Dreams may far were far more likely to be recalled when subjects were awakened from REM sleep than from NREM sleep. This led many to believe that dreaming occurred exclusively during REM sleep. The discovery of a relationship between REM sleep and dreaming was a major impetus for modern sleep research. However, we now know that REM sleep is not necessary for dreaming, that dreaming can occur during NREM sleep and that dreamlike experiences can be elicited during quiet wakefulness. So, we don't just dream during our sleep but also on some occasions in very relaxed waking states when we drift off and suddenly realize we have been dreaming. The fact that we don't need to be asleep in order to dream may have some more important implications. Many a times we wake up in the morning and we cannot remember our dreams. We know that we have dreamt uh, through the night or had a few episodes of dreams but we just cannot remember what the dream is all about. And so what are, why are dreams so forgettable? It seems likely that all of us forget about 95-99% to 99 of our dreams for the very ordinary reason that we sleep right through them and aren't paying any attention to remembering anything. One dream researcher suggests that it's similar to when you're doing something that doesn't take much concentration, such as driving on an open road, so you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Another researcher, very interestingly, explains this as losing the IP address. So you know a dream, but you cannot remember it because you cannot you know, fix it to something you've forgotten the IP address. And all of a sudden, during the day or the next day perhaps, when you're walking down the road or you're doing something, something triggers off a thought process and you suddenly remember your dream. I would like to conclude this short presentation on sleep by quoting one of my favorite sleep researcher, Dr. Matthew Walker. It said that time heals all wounds. But my research suggests that time spent in dream sleep is what heals. <laughs>